الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وكفى والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن سن سنته واهتدى بهده لا يوم الدين ما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فلله الحمد رب السماوات ورب الأرض رب العالمين وله الكبرياء في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم my dear and respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum So my dear brothers and sisters, our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have said that la salata illa bi fatihat al-kitab or kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam that there is no salah without surat al-fatiha. There is no salah without Surah Al-Fatiha. Which means that if a person does not recite Surah Al-Fatiha in salah, that salah is not acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in every rakah of salah, reciting Surah Al-Fatiha is mandatory. There are 114 surahs of Quran. But only Surah Al-Fatiha is the surah that must be recited in every rakah. So this means that Surah Al-Fatiha is the most important surah of Quran. Therefore it is uh, said that Surah Al-Fatiha is called Ummul Quran. The mother of the entire book Quran. The mother. And it is also called Al-Fatiha because this is the first surah of Quran. Fatiha means to inaugurate something. So Quran begins with Surah Al-Fatiha. So this is why this is the inaugural surah of Quran. Now Surah Al-Fatiha had many beautiful names, Ash-Shifa and all those. But when you look into Surah Al-Fatiha, we find out that Surah Al-Fatiha has only seven ayahs. Right? Only seven ayahs. And these seven ayahs are such that we have to recite these seven ayahs all the time. In every rakah. Allah in Quran has said, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ وَالْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمِ in one place Allah said that I have given you seven ayahs on one hand and well Quran al-Azim and on the other hand I have given you, given you the entire Quran. So seven ayahs on one hand and then the entire Quran on the other hand. This is how important Surah Al-Fatiha is. So whatever Allah have described in the entire Quran Allah has summarized all those topics in seven ayahs. Wait. Now, one aspect of Quran is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us alhamd, the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran is teaching us is that Allah is not commanding us all the time that you and I should praise Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that look whatever I have created right is busy praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? For example look at the first ayah of Surah Al-Fatiha. Right? Alhamdu. Alhamdu lillah. Rabbil alameen. Here Allah is not saying that you should praise me. But Allah is saying all praise belong to me. Alhamdulillah. So this Alif Lam means all kind of praise. All kind of praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if you like to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should do 
because everything is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I think all praise belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Which means that you should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the real praise belongs to Him only, right? What it means is, my dear brother, if I praise you, I said, MashaAllah, you look good, you look handsome, or I say, MashaAllah, you are rich, I'm very happy to see that you are leading a good life, you are rich. Or I say that, MashaAllah, you have a good family, you have good children, you have good spouse. Or I say, MashaAllah, you are very, very intelligent. Right? Whatever I praise, right? Whomever I praise, right? Actually, I am praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason for that is that all of the things that you and I have, and every human being has, right? It's all granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, you made efforts, right? But these efforts would not have been fruitful had Allah not given you this body and brain. So this healthy body was given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This brain was given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This ability to work hard, to study hard, to, you know, to uh, spend day and night working to make a career. Now finally you are a successful professional. Right? So all the praise belong to him. You understand? All the praise belong to him. I met uh, many years ago, brothers. I met a person who, has, who is a PhD, who did PhD from a US university. So I was driving on a highway. I took an, took an exit, went to a gas station to get gas. And this person was there on the counter. He was from, from India, from my country. So we started talking. I said, what do you do? He said, well, long story. I came here 10 years ago, did my PhD. And, you know, I excel in that. I got, I got a gold medal from the university for my thesis. But look what I'm doing. What? Working at the, at the gas station. Why? I'm not legal. I don't have immigration status. So I've been working here in this gas station for seven, eight years. Kind of wasting his time. So a bad person with a PhD, with a gold medal, is working in a, in a gas station. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings circumstances on people. So if you are successful, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you, mashallah, are leading a wonderful life, brother, believe me, it's not your efforts. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, you made efforts, but the result of that is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll give you one of my very... Uh, personal story, let me share this with you. When I was growing up in India, right? I had a cousin <coughs> who was from my family, but his family migrated to Qatar, Doha, Qatar. His dad was an engineer, very affluent family. This, uh, my cousin, same age of, like me, extremely intelligent really high high IQ level on top of that mashallah extremely good looking extremely good looking he studied in Doha then decided to come to India and do his uh, medical studies he spent five years in a medical college two years doing his 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 MD seven years Mashallah, he's finished. I came to US and I used to talk to him over the, over the phone. He said, Tariq, I'm finished. I'm coming to US in a few years. Look at this. Did his MD. Now he's going to Qatar to practice. In a few years, he was planning to come 
and join me here in in US look brothers what happened while he was coming to Doha Qadar he had some friends in uh, new uh, new delhi so his friend said that you are going right all of us are going our way now after our uh, our md's studies now so let's go somewhere so one night he and his friends were going somewhere in delhi in a cab a vehicle a heavy vehicle an suv hit this uh, this taxi from behind nobody was injured even the driver was not injured guess who was injured my my cousin his backbone was completely gone ribs backbone everything was gone till now as i talk to you he is bedridden nearly 27 years has passed by bedridden he had all the degrees he had a wonderful and a very bright career in front of him everything was set for him but one accident happened everything is gone he is in his bed till now same age as me my dear brothers and sisters if you are successful if you are mashallah healthy if you are having a wonderful life brother it is all from allah subhanahu wa taala allah knows how to snatch it to util mulk man tasha and then وَتَنزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَعَ Allah knows how to give and Allah knows how to snatch it back. The, so the praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Fadiyah did not say that you should praise me. Allah did not say that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Alhamdulillahi Rabbil All praise already belong to me. If you don't understand it this is this is your problem you are dumb you are crazy you are not understanding that everything is in my hand you don't have any power so the one who has all the power we should praise him the one who can snatch whatever we have any time we should praise him so brother alhamdulillah please think about this point that again i'll repeat allah is not commanding you and me to praise him in surah al fatiha but allah said no already praise belong to me right there's nobody who is justified to be praised except allah subhanahu wa taala when i praise anything in this world i am praising the creator of that thing and that is allah subhanahu wa taala when you when you praise a a flower out there a fruit out there you praise the weather that mashallah the weather is excellent whatever you are praising right you are actually praising the creator of all those things okay i crush a question to you brothers and sisters okay you you see yourself in in the mirror right when you are combing your hair what do you do you are at the looking at the mirror even if you are if you don't have hair still you look at the mirror right so looking at the mirror looking at yourself in the mirror right that is natural for men and women both the only difference between men and women is that women look a lot look at themselves in the mirror day and night all the time a lot right but men do do that as well right now the another question to you is that when our rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to look at himself in the mirror 
right? What he used to say. Yeah. Does he used to praise himself that, look, Abu Bakr, come here, look. I'm looking so good. Umar, come here. Usman, come here. Ali, look. Fatima, Hassan, Hassan. Look, how beautiful am I, am I looking? Of course, Abu Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the most beautiful. Right? But our Rasul told us that when you are looking at yourself in the mirror, right, at that time you should turn the attention to the one who created you and who gave you this, these looks. Right? So, so Rasul used to say, Allahumma ahsan ta khalqi fa ahsin khuluqi. Oh Allah, you gave me such beautiful looks. Allah, I beg you to give me good character as well. Right? Wallah, you gave me these good looks. Now I beg you to give me a good character as well that will match my, my looks. Right? But remember, a person is beautiful from inside first. You could be very handsome, but if you are very evil, you are evil. Right? So uh, uh, the real beauty is in the heart. Right? Therefore, Rasulullah said that this outward beauty is not good is not good enough. The real beauty is right here in the in the heart. Wajaa Rabbahu biqalbi munib udhuluha bi salam. A person who will come to me on the day of judgment with a clean heart, a heart with that is filled with iman, a heart which is filled with love. Allah said, "I will enter him into paradise." Right? So, Allahumma ahsan ta khalqi fa ahsan khuluqi. If you don't uh, know this ayah, uh, sorry, this dua, I think you should memorize it. Allahumma ahsan ta khalqi fa ahsan khuluqi. Oh Allah, you gave me good looks, beautiful looks. Allah, give me good character as well. Here also Rasulullah is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Therefore, the point that, that I'm trying to make, my dear brothers and sisters, is that praise Allah. Believe me, brothers and sisters, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Everything is praising Allah. Why aren't you praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Look, in one hadith, in one ayah of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa im min shayin. Hmm. Wa im min shayin. Illa yusabbihu bihamdi. Jazakallah. Wa im min shayin. Illa yusabbihu bihamdi. Wala killa tafqahuna tasbihahum. Everything that I had created, stones, birds, water, air, angels, you know, uh, leaves, uh, fruits, uh, flowers, everything that I had created, right, is praising me. Bihamdi. Is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us say, Wala killa tafqahuna tasbihahum. Yes, you will not be able to understand how a stone is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah saying, but it is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So everything is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, if you really ponder over Quran, you will find that there are many surahs of Quran that start with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Now, today is Juma, right? There is a surah called Surah Al-Jum'ah, right? How does it start? Yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ardil Malikil quddusil aziz al-hakim Alladhi ba'atha fil ummiyyina al-rasul Everything that is in the sky and the world, world Is doing tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Another surah The one before it Surah Al-Saf Sabbaha lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard Wa huwa al-aziz al-hakim Whatever is in the sky and the earth since ever Since ever has been praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Now but this word since ever Since how many years? Brothers and sisters The more you discover the space Or the world is, is discovering the space the more you will find out that this earth is a new planet. 
is pretty new. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created orbits, planets, galaxies out there that are hundreds and billions of years old. Hundreds and billions of years old. And those galaxies and planets right, were, cre were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way that they are floating in the orbit since ever. Since Allah created them. And this world is a new planet. It's not that old. And especially human beings, Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, as compared to the, the age of space, I would say it came just a few days ago. Adam alayhi salam looks like he just came a few, few days ago. Because a planet out there, right, the age could be 500 billion years old. And Adam alayhi salatu wasalam came few years ago. <laughs> right? Few a few thousand years ago. Or maybe a million years ago, year ago. That's it. And here you came, I came, and we are ready to leave. Somebody else will come, will, will, will replace us. So our age is short, and the age of this universe is short. But Think about it. Everything that Allah has created in the space and the earth is busy doing tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these orbits and galaxies and uh, planets are busy doing tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala since billions and billions of years. Now if you sitting in, in Orlando, you say, I'm, I'm not going to praise Allah, I will take all the credit uh, myself. So you are dumb, <laughs> you are foolish, you are not understanding. Everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now my dear brother Surah Yaseen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have very beautifully put it, right? Allah said, وَكُلُّنْ فِي فَلَكِ يَسْبَحُونَ right? Allah said, all the, all the things that I had made in orbit. Now look at this, falak. Falak means space, subhanallah. Allah is not talking about the earth right now. Allah is saying it's falak. Falak means space. So, wakullun fi falak. Everything that I had created in the falak, in the space, yes, bahun is floating. And it's floating since I created it billions of years ago. And it's floating with great silence. There's no noise out there. Now, let's say our. Uh, a planet that Allah created 5 billion years ago, 10 billion years ago, since then Falaki Yasbahoon is floating and doing tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is saying, Everything is doing tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh people, you should join my creations in praising me. Now come and understand. What Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said <coughs> that when a Muslim refuses to pray a single salah, you are praying five times salah, but you said a particular salah I'm not going to pray. I don't feel like praying. I don't want to pray. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, Fakad kafara. Man taraka salatam muta'amidan. Muta'amidan means knowingly, willingly. You said, I don't want to pray fajr. No, it's, it's too hard. I don't want to get up early in the morning. Rasulullah Rasul said, Fakat kafar. Well, you did kufr. You did kufr. Why? You should be busy praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for example, Fajr, you are saying, I don't want to get up. It's, it's too hard for me to get up. I'll pray, but whenever, whenever I'll get 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, whenever I'll get up, especially on weekends, Saturday, Sunday, I don't feel like getting up in the morning. Whenever I'll get up, I will, I will pray. You see? My dear brothers and sisters, this means that you are not praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. kafara. Faqad kafara. You did an act of kufr, un, un, ungratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although my dear brothers and sisters, when you decide not to get up for fajr, <laughs> think about it. Brother, this sleep that you are getting, this deep sleep, 
that you go to sleep any time you wish without taking any pills. You close your eyes and you go to sleep. Brothers of Allah, this deep sleep is such a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالنَّوْمَ subata وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ libasa وَجَعَلْنَا nahara ma'asha. Allah said, look, I give you this deep sleep so that my slave can get um, peace in his sleep. He can get refreshed in his sleep so that when he gets him in the morning, when, when nahara ma'asha, he has to go and work. Look at the compassion and love of Allah. Allah wants you to get up and then go to work. But before you go to work, you need to have a good night's sleep. So Allah makes you go to sleep. All Allah is saying is that, okay, sleep, but be watchful. When it's time for Fajr, get up and pray Salah to me. You say, no Allah, whenever I'll get up, at that time I will pray Salah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, this is not a, the thankfulness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Faqat kafra, you are very ungrateful to Allah. You are forgetting that this deep sleep that you are enjoying, it is given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see? My dear brothers and sisters, therefore thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The problem is, as we are going towards the day of judgment, right, we see that this phenomena of ungratefulness, right, this is becoming like a fashion, a trend. We don't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember, in Islam, thankfulness does not just mean verbal thank. No, it, it, is, it means verbal thanks as well as actions. This is what, what Rasulullah said, if you are not showing to Allah through your actions by praying five times salah, no matter how many times you say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, it does not matter. It just does not matter. It's like hypocrisy, munafiqat. Allah then, you know, pray salah, you say, no Allah, I don't want to pray salah, but Alhamdulillah, Allah, I thank you. <laughs> you know, what kind of thankfulness is that? You're not ready to pray five times to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you are saying, I, I thank Allah all the time. So this is munafiqat. This is hypocrisy, right? This is why my, my dear brothers and sisters, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believe me, my, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah deserves thanks. Nobody deserve, deserves thank. Only and only Allah deserves thanks, right? And when we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is so compassionate that He's saying, La in shakartum la azidannakum. You thank me and out of joy, I'm going to increase my bounties on you. He's so compassionate, although he didn't have to promise this to us. He deserves our thanks. The Allah is saying that I'm so compassionate that when you, whenever you remember me, you thank me, I'll give you a gift in, uh, in return. And my gift is that I will increase the bounties on you. And again, look at this. Wala in kafartum, same ayah, right? And if you do kufr, if you are ungrateful to me, Allah did not say that I'm going to snatch these bounties away from you. This is how compassionate Allah is. Inna adabi la shadeed. Let's remember that my punishment is very severe. So Allah is warning. Allah is not saying I'm going to, to snatch the blessing away from you. But Allah is just reminding that my punishment is great. This is how compassionate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. That my brothers and sisters, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever you read Surah Al-Fatiha, brothers and sisters, I would like to get rewards. Think, Alhamdulillah. Again, in conclusion, I'd like to make this point again, very important point. Alhamdulillah, all praise belong to Allah. All praise belong to Allah. is not asking us to, to, in this ayah, to praise Him. No, Allah is saying, no. All praise already belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are intelligent, you will join Everybody in praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you me understand. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakallah wa bihamdi, nashbu wa la ilaha wa